Hi everyone, it's me, Krillius, Team Racing Productions MC and producer. And joining me today is Cherise Crawford. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you fabulously. I can hear you fabulous. It's great to see you. Thanks for being here. I know. It's great to see you. All my team joke, they say, everyone in your phone is cousins. And I say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> because uh, we're well, so family. Far, yes, yes. The four <laughs> viewers who don't know who you are, please just give them a brief introduction of who you are and a little bit of a background. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, my name is Sharice Crawford. I am a proud third generation native Washingtonian and a product of all four corners of the District of Columbia. You know, I was born and raised in Southeast Congress Park, DC to be more specific. I know that's a community in Congress Heights now uh, and raised my parents to get two caregivers. My mom was a public servant and is a public servant of her. And my dad was uh, supportive in the disability housing. So I grew up, you know, really with this idea that everyone deserved to be treated as just a human being, regardless of their uh, challenges. And so ironically enough, I am a huge advocate now in the disability community. Uh, oh, Northeast DC, I was bused to school over there. Uh, you know, I was, I was part of the experiment is what they call when mm -hmm. charter schools kind of first came on board there. And, uh, you know, play basketball in Northeast and, you know, transition back to Southeast and Southwest where my grandparents lived. And that was our entertainment spot. You know, the wharf was H2O and, you know, it didn't cost too much to park there. Uh, and lastly, you know, <laughs> and, you know, lastly, uh, grateful to have two uncles who were servicemen and businessmen who ran printing shop in Northeast. And so, you know, for me running this race uh, citywide for the at-large position, just for me, just brings in my entire family's mm -hmm. history uh, for equity, for access, um, for opportunity that many of our families just have simply been left out of. Mm, and that is so important. And so now you've thrown your hat in the ring for this race. What is it about, you know, this time or this cycle that made you want to, you know, get in on things? You know, I'm glad you add, you know, I had to, if I'm going to be transparent, I'll start with the transparent part. And it's sometimes mm -hmm. a little bit uh, painful to talk about, you know, your own uh, struggles, but I, you know, it happened on August 2nd. I, my mom and I were in war for the New Hampshire pharmacy. And um, I, you know, again, she still cares for disability persons. My two of my uncles were uh, recovered from a stroke, they're stroke survivors, and we were getting medical supplies. And right as I dropped her off in the door, gunshots fired off behind our vehicle. The gunman then became, came from behind my car and then now shooting out across the street to another gunman and using my car as a shield to protect them from the violence that was happening right next to my car. I didn't have a button to push for a life alert. I forgot that my phone has the two buttons to push for an alert. I looked at the gunman eye to eye and it was just a numbing experience of just being powerless and not in control, knowing how hard I've worked in public safety and all the advancement we've made to ensure that residents uh, should not have to go through this type of tragedy. Mm -hmm. And now we have to re-implement some of those strategies. And so I took Listen, some time off. I, from I don't want to cut you, but I know that feeling you said something about like not remembering the, the but. I was only in that situation in the middle of D.C. near, um, we were uh, near Nellie's around that area. And mm -hmm. that happened, I, mean, I think it was last fall. And I've never been in that situation before. I didn't know uh, everything horrible. I ever thought you would do in the situation went out the window. Like It did. Through, I dropped on the floor. I, I didn't know what to do. So it's it's a really harrowing situation to be in. Yes. You know, I felt it. I felt the pain. You know, I, I didn't know. I didn't make a call. I didn't, you know, how some of these brave people have the full video. I didn't get the video. I didn't, I, you know, I just, I really froze. And we called the, we, you know, after the shots had gone, we called the police. Uh, the police came. And to be honest, they, they treated us like we were the criminals when we called the police. So we need more sensitivity in how we deal with victims. And I was, you know, I didn't, I identified myself as a public servant. 10 years ago, I wrote my name on a ballot uh, in the city to become an elected ANC. 
And 20 years ago, I completed a rites of passage from a youth service initiative that would that because I was an at-risk youth, I'm um, provided such great resources. But we have to have a better response to victims and we have to have better safety mechanisms in place like life alerts, like safety alerts. And so that forced me to take a step back. Um, I probably from August 2nd to August 31st, I just, I went radio silent. And I just, I prayed and I just wanted to figure out my life was spared, what's my assignment? August 31st, I, my mom with life was spared as well. I filed for office on my mother's birthday. Wow, wow, wow. That I see it. I see it. It's certainly the time. It's certainly the time. And so you've touched on public safety as something really, really important to you. Uh, what other issues are there that, you know, it's close to your heart that you really want to tackle if elected for the at-large council position? All of it becomes a matter of oversight and impl- oversight, implementation, um, and accountability. Mm. You know, that, those are the areas that I see we lack in the most. We do a great job with pushing out new legislation, a great job with, with the excitement of the groundbreaking. We do wonderful with kind of the, 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 the photo op moment. Mm-hmm. But then once we are behind the scenes and we're asking questions like, you know, hey, this was supposed to be on this time. I like timelines and deadlines. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Internally in my campaign and, in, and externally in my government. Yeah. And when you start asking those questions for accountability, you're getting the runaround. Um, mm-hmm. You're not getting straight answers. Uh, you're not getting the proper oversight. The implementation and the follow through is not happening. So mm-hmm. what good is it to make the big announcements about the new policies and new agendas if we're not implementing them? And so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's certainly so, so, so important to make sure that that is happening so that, you know, the government is working in the way that it's supposed to work. That is really, really important. I think think we have lost Charisse there for a minute. Let's see if we can get her back. Let us see. While we are waiting to see if we can get get Charisse back here, I want to remind everyone that if you are not yet registered to vote and you want to make sure that you are vote ready, you want to check your status to make sure that you are able to vote, that you can go ahead and text Team Racine to 40649. That is... uh, Team Racine to 40649. That is courtesy of headcount.org. It's an election year, so we want to just make sure that everybody is out and ready to vote when that time comes. Um, I don't think we have Sharice returning yet. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just end this one. But if you do want to learn more, of course, you can go to Sharice Campaign's website, which I believe is sharicecrawford.com. I believe that's what was just there. So go ahead and check that out. Um, And for more views, interviews, and uh, things like this from Team Racing Productions, of course, you can visit our social media. And that is Team Racine on all forms of social media. That's at Team Racine. Most of all, thank you for watching. Actually, I believe we have Sharice rejoining us. I hope so. That would be fabulous. That would be lovely. Let us see if, uh, yes, 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 we have, we got back Sharice. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, welcome back. Welcome back. Um, and let's just pick up from where we left off. And you were talking about, you know, these implementation 
of, uh, you know, the actual policies that are announced, you know, that overhead, that oversight, you know, really coming through with a government that you would be proud to be a part of. Yeah, and don't let me forget about the digital divide once before we wrap up here, because yes. uh, if we don't get access to internet on our education safety side of the conversation, as you can see, technology is bleeding. Mm -hmm, as much mm -hmm. as we re we're heavily relying on it right now, it's extremely overwhelmed. Our systems are overwhelmed. So looking at greater relationships with our tech departments and more transparency and talking about how we're strengthening our towers, how we're strengthening our signals. I mean, this is, I talked about the levels of public safety and, and education safety when we're in a pandemic looks like making sure that our young people have access to high powered internet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Especially including our representatives. Mm -hmm. That's I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but they're like your systems are down. You got one. You're you're on one bar. I think we can all. <laughs> and so now we've got a great, you know, practical example of the digital divide, you know, coming into focus. Yes, that is certainly. Oh, it, it really is, and and how do we bring this more? Become more transparent with bringing yeah. to light the steps that were taken to say, we are recognizing the level of the challenges that we have, here's mm -hmm. what we're doing about it. Yes. And that's what that's what transparency looks like for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was talking about the level of the public safety. So there's transportation safety, and I, I think that's where I was when it cut off, yeah. talking about how, you know, I was one of the kids who right now we have so many grieving parents from gun violence. I can't, you know, there are organizations like the NDBs and, you know, from all around the city whose children are literally leaving us um, from senseless violence that there's so many babies to name. She, there was a wonderful display of all of our young people who had transitioned over um, this coming weekend with the creative school. We're celebrating Kron Hilton. Um, and, and his verdict just came out where, uh, you know, the young man was not found guilty in that case. Mm -hmm. And so how do we console the families and how do we create greater accountability on the public safety side? So there are levels of public safety. And then you have the transportation safety. Um, I have pa grieving parents who have are grieving their children just because they're being hit by vehicles trying to get to school. I, we have to be able to say, not only do we hear you, but here's what we do, we're doing about it. You yeah. know, because I was one of those kids. I was attending Anacostia High School, as a matter of fact, and a pharmaceutical vehicle hit my body almost over the power line, and I was medevaced to um, Children's Hospital. Mm -mm, you have the here, experiences. <laughs> <laughs> this is my lived experience in our city. You know, and obviously the great moments with all of our entertainment and things. But mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to knowing what our families and parents are dealing with, uh, I understand. Um, yeah. I understand the instant, the safety we need for food safety and food security. Mm -hmm. Growing up uh, in a food desert, uh, the safety we need with economic safety. I looked at our education report. There is not one program in the entire District of Columbia that focuses on, on entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. While we say that entrepreneurship and the business economy, excuse me, the business community is what drives our economy. Mm -hmm. So if we know this, how have we not created the proper path, like path, the path, the pathways to economic safety? So these are just some of the, the safety parameters that um, need to go in place. Technology safety again, uh, and, and security, yeah. uh, cyber security safety. So we have, we have yes, a quite a public, robust certainly. public safety platform here. Yes, yes. Well, um, when does voting begin? Um, and, you know, please talk about the importance of voting and, you know, getting out the vote here in the district. Oh gosh, uh, you know, the, I, I'm going to say, say thank you for that question because there's so many levels of voting here. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be clear, early voting starts on June 3rd. Mm -hmm. uh, you, and, and early voting, early enough, excuse me, is when I had a Fisher writing in Canada 10 years ago. Went to the, the polls and I wrote my name in, not as a candidate who was legacy to politics or had some sort of, of mantle passed to me, but as a human being returning mm -hmm. the power back to people is what we represent um so i i from early voting writing my name on the ballot to the two week span of <laughs> of early voting i was able to secure my name as a write-in candidate and actually have neighbors 10 years ago to write my name on the ballot mm 
Ah, wow. So now fast forwarding with all of your help, we'll actually be official candidates on the ballot. And so it's, this is our, our reclaiming our political power is and giving candidates like myself an opportunity to have a voice in this race to represent all of our residents in the four mm-hmm. quadrants of our city is the most powerful thing we can do as a society. And making that connection between how the ballot represents our bottom line on our block. And I think we've not done a great job at that. Yeah. Um, and so early voting is, Jay, is June 3rd. The polls open officially on election day, June 21st. Uh, but before we get there, we have a lot of work to do. So we're yeah. going to be calling on X-Ray Scene and all of our cousins out here to chip in. Uh, we have to get certified. There's a program called Fair Elections. Mm -hmm. And in this program, we have a requirement to receive small contributions, maximum of $100 from district residents to certify. And so we are very, very close to that threshold right now. The few more donations that we can take right now to help us get certified so that we can go pick up petitions as an official certified candidate with the Office of Campaign Finance. And guess what? What? I'm happy to share that we are leading in that race, even oh. on the incumbents. Oh, that is great. Well, how can people learn more about the campaign and donate and support and find out and learn more about it yeah. as it goes along? How can they go ahead and do that? I'm happy you asked. You can visit CrawfordAtLarge.com, C-R-A-W-F-O-R-D-A-T, large. Dot com and you can find us on all platforms at Crawford at large um it says you're sharing uh there, there's there's our public safety work there um yeah we're, we're ready to go out there and, and get dirty and making sure our kids are safe we're making sure that there's equity in our communities um I think I lost myself on the video here oh no you're good you. you're good I was just sharing that oh, image good. you were talking <laughs> no you're fine absolutely um but yeah on all platforms at Crawford at large we want to we're bringing the imagery to make it real about how we need to buckle up and get to work together um and so that's what's happening on on all platforms at Crawford at large you mm-hmm. can register to volunteer you can make a contribution there the minimum to qualify is five dollars so and we know there's an economic insecurity reality that we're dealing with with the, the you know even before the COVID pandemic we were uh, in an economic crisis um, and so that's only exacerbate, exacerbated since the pandemic. So a $5 contribution will be matched five to one by district residents to help us say, this is a voice, this is a woman that's going to represent my interests. And that is what it does. It gives us an opportunity to participate in our democracy. Well, thank you so much, Sharice, for being here with me today. It has been such, such, such a pleasure. And I wish you the best of luck on your campaign. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to coming back now. Yes, work to do. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. And to our viewers, please follow Team Racing Productions and all forms of social media. But most of all, thank you for watching. Bye, everyone.